Then uh. All right, Shalom. First and foremost, just as always, I would like to give all praises, honor, and all glory unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rakakwadash, which is the Paleo Hebrew, the Lashwan Kwadash, the Holy Tongues, the one true name of the Heavenly Father being Yahweh, and that of the Messiah, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus being Yahweh Shai. I'd like to give double honors unto the Alvis and the Apostles at GMS Great Millstone and the sincere peace, love, blessing, salutations unto all you hopeful and faithful members of the elect who have been called throughout the four corners of the earth, man. May you endure that you may be chosen. All right, and as the scriptures say, be separate, right? And touch no unclean thing as this fire is about to take place on the earth, man. And here you have, I have the definition of this word hell pulled up, which goes into what? Gehenna. And Gehenna, as we go to the biblical usage, will define what that what that Gehenna actually uh, goes back to. It says, hell is a place of the future punishment called Gehenna, right? So hell is that place of future punishment, man. The, the punishment prophesied to hit this earth, which we have, uh, uh, you know, we which we'll get into here in a second. But going on, it says, Or Gehenna of fire. This was originally the Valley of Hinnom, south of Jerusalem, where the filth and dead animals of the city were cast out and burned. So when you go back to the law, right, <laughs> when you had an unclean thing, such as a dead animal, right, or something that touched a dead animal or something to that case, this item, this an inanimate object was declared uh, uh, unclean. Right, so the way to handle that unclean item was to burn it, man. All right. Now that's likened unto what? As we go ahead and continue, it says a fit symbol for the wicked and their future destruction. Right. So this is the word that they were using. Why? Because it was a fit symbol of how all the impure things are getting ready to be burnt out of the world, man. You see, here it is, Christianity told us that this hell, right, was some place under the world. Well, clearly not, man. In fact, the scriptures say that what? The spirit of man goeth upward. It doesn't say anything about going down into the center of the earth. You're only going to find two definitions of the word hell throughout the Bible, man. Right? And why is there two definitions? Because it's the same uh, uh, word with different meanings, man. Here you'll find that word hell for this future punishment that you're going to find in the context, such as this Mark 9 and uh, uh, 45, which says, And if they, thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet and be cast into hell, right? <laughs> It's better for you to, to right to cut off particular things and, and, and give up sacrifices in this world in order to be delivered from this world, man. Instead of being whole in this flesh, right? And dying right along with this world in this Gehenna fire, man. Dying with all the impure things because you yourself are impure. It says, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Right, that fire that never shall be quenched, showing you what? The, the, the likeness of, of how great that fire is going to be, man. 200 million thermonuclear missiles prophesied to hit this earth, man. Isaiah 34 describes it as what? The the the, the lake of fire, man. The lake of fire on this. What does he say? That 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 the streams turned into pitch, man. The water turned into pitch. We're 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 standing in the lake of fire, man. And this and there's a prophesied fire to hit this place that's going to be beyond anything the earth has ever seen before. And the likeness of the world, as this prophecy say, is going to wobble to and fro. You see? But let's go ahead and grab that other definition of that word, hell. Right? So you see here it says G1067. So anytime you see that word hell where it goes into that uh, uh, definition of Gehenna, right? It'll be fitting that context of that future destruction prophesied to hit this place, like an under that thermonuclear destruction, man. But guess what? We come up here and we got different definitions, man. We got different definitions. So let's see what this one is. Psalms 86 and 13. 
say yo. Strong's H, 7585. Sheol, Sheol. And second entry, Sheol, Sheol. So you see here it says, Sheol underworld, grave, hell, or pit. Which really that word, Sheol, goes into the word hell. I mean, it's a lucky uh, grave, you see. So that word hell goes into the word Sheol in this definition here. And it's going to mean grave. The, 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 the pit, man. Um, let me grab the uh, Strong's Info. I'm selecting up the Strong's Info, the uh, concordance results. Um, to get a better understanding of the definition, man. Because when you go into this uh, biblical usage, it's not always the proper definition, as it's telling you that's the biblical usage, right? So if you want the actual definition of the word, uh, sometimes you got to go down here and read into this a little further, man. So just, 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 just see what it says. Let's go ahead and jump down into it. Um, hollow place, hollow land. Yeah, so there, there isn't too much, man. The underworld. too much but yeah man the point being that word sheol mean in the grave now let's read let's read where where this context was used psalms 86 and 13 for great is thy mercy toward me and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell right from receiving what from, from being put in the, in, in the grave man in the tomb let's read this one same same uh same definition of the word right psalms 116 and verse 3 it says the sorrows of death compass me, and the pains of hell, right? The grave, get hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow, right? So you say, what? The sorrows of death and the pains of the grave uh, uh, have, have, have put hold on him, man. But what is he doing? He's crying out to Yahweh by Shem Shai for deliverance from that, man. All right? Anyway, I thought there was a. Uh... Yeah, that's, that's 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 good on the definitions, man. You can always read more into it, but let's go ahead and get into this prophecy here. This is the book of Second Peter, chapter three, and uh, getting straight to the point here. It says verse. Six, whereby the world then was being overflowed with water perished. Right? The world then was what? It was overflowed with water. The Heavenly Father needed to cleanse the impurities of the earth, and he did it by the form of water at this time. Which water, it cleans things. But the greater cleansing power is what? Fire, man. Going on, verse uh, 6, it says... Whereby the world then was being, oh, it's like in verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Right? <laughs> so just the same world that, that was flooded by water is about to be cooked by fire, man. Why? Because of the ungodliness on this earth. Verse 8, it says, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Right? So it's, been, it's only been a couple days, man. The Heavenly Father is preparing to uh, uh, come and seek that vengeance from, from just the other day. Verse 9, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but long suffering. And so the only reason why... Esau has been able to get away with what he has and the people of this world are able to commit adultery and do these things is why because it's though though it may feel like it's been a long time to the most high it's been a day man and though you might count it slackness it's not slackness man he's long suffering meaning that he's patiently been watching prophecy unfold man 
going on, it says, toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Right, that all you Israelites would, would get right, man. But unfortunately, that's not the way it's going to be, man. Two thirds of you are going to continue being fools, partying and bullshit, and you're going to die right along with this world, man. You're going to taste that second death being that fire, man. That thermonuclear destruction that'll be uh, 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 poured upon this earth, and more in particular, 200 million thermonuclear missiles poured upon Babylon, man. Um, going on, it says. But the day of the Lord shall come in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Right? So what technology of warfare has been created to cause the mallet, the elements to melt with fervent heat and to cause a great noise within the sky, man? That's thermonuclear destruction. You see? It says, the earth also... And the works that are therein shall be burned up. Here you see it, man. This is what we're reading is that Gehenna. What we're reading is hell, man. This is the hell that will take place on this earth, man. This is the Gehenna that will come into fruition before the world. You see? Not this made-up fairy tale that we've been taught through plantation, watered-down Christianity, man. Verse 11, it says, Seeing then that these things shall be dissolved right all these gonna be dissolved by by thermonuclear destruction it says what manner of persons ought you to be right what manner of persons should you be man in all holy conversation and godliness looking for a hastening of the coming of the day of god right why because we know that these things out here are temporal man prophesied to be melted prophesied to be destroyed you want to go <laughs> that's a little who the hell is gonna right now Knowing the history we know, go in a time machine and go back to, to uh, uh, Japan and go hang out in Hiroshima the day before the bombs drop, man. In fact, you're you going to go over there and you're going to spend all your money on buying a house and, and starting a business. No, man. <laughs> See, we know this place is going to be destroyed. So what? Being an all-holy conversation and godliness and looking for a hastening of the coming of the day of God. Again, wherein the heavens shall be on fire and be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Hey, there you go, man. So he's going to burn all this place with all its impurities up. To why? Verse 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Right? He's going to destroy all the impurities to establish cleanliness, man. Righteousness, man. Life. Joy. You see, Idumian free living. But with that, Lord willing, is that a fine man? I believe the point has been made. I just wanted to get into that definition of the word hell and prove as to how it's so suiting of a, of a, of a definition to the destruction that's been prophesied, man. So again, with that, all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Double honors unto the Alps and the Apostles at GMS Grimmelstone. Peace, love, blessings, salutations unto you hopeful and faithful members of the elect. Whatsoever you may be, shall